All right, today I'm going to um, try my hand at very, very basic amplifier repair. This is amplifier repair class 101, just as basic as I can make it or I can think of it. And, you know, you guys that already know stuff or techs or, you know, repairman already, this class is not for you. So, you know, I don't need no comments like it don't work like that or you didn't explain that this way and all that this is trying to break it down and make it um, as easy as I can and basically um, amplifier repair for dummies how about that by tram doctor so anyway I got out one of my um, simplest and smallest amplifiers that I have to um, make this video on this is an old Browning mark 100 uh, earlier version of the Browning 180 two um, small baldy tubes in it um, sweep tube amplifier using two tubes um, so anyway with the amplifier a tube amplifier because that's the only ones I deal with um, basically there are four part well five parts to them there's the amplifying device and since we, I only deal with tube amplifiers the device is going to be a tube or tubes this one is live with the two baldies in it and the reason we call them baldies is they don't have a plate cap which is that at the top they're just you know glass at the top they're bald headed or some of them have this pointer here but that's nothing you know and you see that's just a smooth or bald head so that's why those are referred to as baldies because of the bald head and most normal sweep tubes well those are normal too but the common sweep tube have that plate cap there and that's where the high voltage comes in always if you see one with the plate cap the high voltage and the output is going to be at that plate cap and by the way if you're you know playing with one or sticking your fingers in one that's where the uh, 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 killer stuff is. That's where the high high voltage is going to zap you. It's going to be at it's one of the places, but it's a main place. It's going to be there. You got exposed metal and stuff up there on the plate caps. And, uh, you know, don't stick your fingers in there, especially if it's live. Um, I almost killed myself on a little JB-12 when I was a child. So, And that's what made me start learning about these things. And one more thing, while I got these tubes... If your tube looks like that, you said a vacuum leak. Um, that's why you see the white, but you see the black around it too. That had an arc, a dead short. And silly me, I was working on a tin tube amp, and I didn't see that because the tubes were packed in. And I tried that amp, and that amp shorted on me. And I was like, "What the heck?" And I looked, you know, a lot closer and started pulling out the tubes and um, saw that short. Um, but we'll get to. Um, tubes in short later first you got your amplifying device which is the tube in a tube amplifier tube or tubes um, you have your voltages for it which is your power supply voltage and most amps are grounded grid and on a grounded grid all you got is your um, plate voltages which if it had a plate cap would go there but these baldies don't have a plate cap, so it comes down through one of the uh, normal pins, and on these it's on pin 9. And by the way, um, tubes with a plate cap are better tubes for RF than a baldy. Because the, the output and the high voltages come out through the top. And they don't intermingle and mix and, and, and all that as much with the input and the other voltages that come out through the bottom. So they don't um, intermix as much with it coming out the top. And you can run higher frequencies um, through a tube with the plate cap at the top. Then you can a baldy or octal tube or audio tubes which don't have plate caps because the output comes down through one of the pins and you can't really separate it very much from the um, other pins like the input and drive and cathode and ground and stuff so um, it's a better design for RF
to take it at the top and you can get more um, frequency and cleaner better performance when you take it at the top but anyway you got your amplifying device you got your power supply which on the grounded grid amp it um, puts the high voltage on the plate and then you got the filament which also comes from the power supply and if the tubes are lit up you see that nice orange in there this is lie you see the orange in the tubes they're lit up if the tubes are lighting you got your filament if they're not lighting you're missing a filament somewhere um, if the um, power supply is putting out the filament voltage a lot of times with the filament with uh, one or multiple tubes not lighting it's usually a dirty socket or a dirty tube pin where it's not good getting a good connection and often if you see a lot of filaments that are out they might be in series you know like a Christmas tree light where one go out they all go out or one go out two go out you know in a string and that's usually a dirty um, either socket or a dirty um, tube pin and clean, clean your tube pins if it's not lighting and you know your power supply and everything else seems to be working on it um, so you got your um, high voltage you got your filament it's certain grounds you would need but that's usually not a problem um, and then you got your uh, input circuit and your output circuit and those are usually very problematic you know with the uh, amplifier not working um, this amplifier does not have a tuned input it doesn't even have a capacitor to just to input the uh, later 180s had a little trimmer cap so you could at least trim the input SWR a little bit this one does not have one um, and on the later ones they adjusted that so on the input all it does the input actually comes on that side over there it goes into the relay here and when you key it down it takes it uh, from the relay into the um, tube um, there um, one of the major problems with tube amplifiers especially old ones like that is dirty relays and bad relay contacts where you know the relay, relay keys down but the contacts are dirty or they're not making because they're old and you know the uh, metal fatigue and all that so uh, the power is not making it to the tube or the output top power goes from the relay or from the um, output circuit tank circuit into the relay and out the other coax and a lot of times again a dirty relay uh, make it so that the um, power is not going either not going in or, or not going out so the input circuit or the output circuit and then the keying circuit um, this one has a tube keying circuit and all the keying circuit does and I've had people say that's a, a amplifier tube you know that's a 6BQ5 amplifier tube well all tubes are amplifier tubes um, it's just you know how you use them right um, well maybe not a diode but uh, all triodes and above are um, and they use this 6BQ5 amplifier tube to key the high voltage relay here in later amps they used you know um, solid state keying circuit but a keying circuit all it does is key the relay if the relay is keyed up when you uh, I'm going to turn it on right quick well we are on but take it off standby you see the relay click in there if you um if the relay is keying up then the keying circuit is working it's doing its job and it's unkeying when it's supposed to by the way I get a lot of questions on people saying I got a bad relay the relay is sticking normally uh, relays don't stick what makes them stick especially with the transistor keying circuit is the keying circuit itself is sticky or leaky and it makes the um, keying relay stick so again you got a sticky relay nine times out of ten or probably 98 out of a hundred it's not the relay it's the keying circuit that activates the relay it's leaky and it's sticking and with the transistor relay transistor circuit it's usually the transistor keying relay that um, is leaky and hence uh, doesn't release the relay so the relay stick it sticks but anyway um, that's the basic you got in going into the tubes the tube you know once it gets drive in it amplifies it and then it goes out into the tank circuit and then the output goes 
you know, at the end of the tank circuit into the relay on the output side and then out to the antenna if everything's working right. So hopefully everything is still working on this one. Well, first I'm going to put it on standby right quick. <clears throat> and on standby, the amplifier is off. Um, I got a 1.2 input SWR. We putting out four watts. But over here on the other side of the amplifier, the output side, we're only keying a watt and a half. So only um, out of the four watts here, only a, like a watt and a half are making it into the SWR meter. Um, the reason for that is Browning use a little cheater for the ground. Most amplifiers, they use three terminals on the relay. They use a third terminal to... Um, I guess activate the amplifier you know whether you're turning on the high voltage or a ground or you know a power supply B minus or bias um, to make the amplifier you know activate or amplify um, most amplifiers have a third leg that switches that on or grounds it or does what it needs to do but as you can see this has two legs so what Browning did on the um, input if you see transmitter there that's your input it goes to here and it goes to that coil L1 to ground. That's what grounds the um, tube when you key down. But what happens is that coil is in the circuit at all times. Um, so even in standby, you know, even with the amplifier unplugged and off, that coil is still connected and it messes with your power and your SWR. Um, so that's why you got a 1.2 with 4 watts over here, but you only got a watt and a half um, coming over here. Um, Browning did that to save money. Um, people like, why did they do this? Why did they do that? Because um, amplifiers want to, people, manufacturers want to make money and they're cheap. So they're like, hey, we can put the um, choke and connect it to the input. And then when we key down the input, then that choker activate, you know, and, and it'll ground the amplifier. Yeah, but that messes with your SWR. Well, they don't care about that. They they want to make money, save a few dollars, right? So, anyway, if the amplifier is keying, your keying circuit is good. If your tubes are lighting, your filament is good. Um, we're gonna key this one down right quick. Uh, 20 watt scale. I should have took that to 200. It's doing about 50, 60 watts. Dead can 40. Audio, audio, audio. Talking about 60 on average. So this is the amplifier working key down. I have the scope connected to the drive of the tubes. So that's showing the input or the drive going into the tube. See how it's distorted? Hope that comes up on the cam um, camcorder. It's distorted like that because again, this amplifier does not have any type of input tuning or input circuit or input tank, which would smooth that out. And that's why you have that distortion there, because the um, input of the tubes is not equal all the way across you know the resistance you know are low at one point and high at the other it kind of varies and that's playing havoc on your drive and that's why it distorts it like that because there's no input tuning or circuit to smooth that out so that's another thing why they don't have one well again they want to save money but amplifier works so they're like hey you know sit it sitting out there but anyway reason I wanted to show that and I got the um, scope again hooked to right to the input of the tube there is because one of the very most common problems with the amplifier is that the drive doesn't make it to the tubes at all for some reason and it's usually the relay with this amp on right now if you can see my input SWR is 1.5 this is with the amp on drive making it to the tubes, right? So what I'm going to do is try to stick something in the relay to make it so the drive doesn't make it to the tubes. Just to show you what happens. So I'm trying to stick that in there. I'm old camera in one hand. My little zip tie in the other. 
let's try it with the good hand there we go zip tie in there so I'm blocking the input from coming in and this is what happens in real life the, the uh, contacts get dirty or they're not quite making on the relay and um, we still should be lined up so we key it down now zero watts because the drive is not making it to it here's the drive again on the scope no drive is making it into the um, tubes but if you don't have a scope one reason you could one way you could tell is here's my input SWR I always ask people about what's your input SWR it went from 1.5 to 6.9 7.0 right because those watts are stuck right there they're not making it across that contact and that happens a lot with dirty contacts so when somebody says you know everything seems to be working my you know my amp is uh, uh you know the tubes are lighting up i think i got my voltages and everything but it, it won't it won't go it won't do nothing i'm like hey what's your input swr if your input swr is high like that you know five seven ten fifteen affinity your watts are not making it into the tubes so I'm going to pull that out and hopefully I didn't mess up my relay by sticking it in there. Now see 1.4 back to normal that's the drive making it and there go my output you know again. So if you got a high input SWR more than you might have a broken wire or the relay actually might be bad but it's usually a dirty relay contact um, if you got a high input SWR and your drive is not making it into the um, tubes. Another problem is the other side of the um, relay contact, the output side, it doesn't make it. So we're going to see if we can stick that in there. This was a little tricky. Uh, she don't want to go. Come on. All right, I guess that's in there enough. So now my drive not my drive my output because I got that blocked you know let's say I got a dirty relay so the output not going so anyway you know it's trying look at that a quarter watt you know trying to sleep um, seep through there my input is making it through there input SWR is good but I got no output you know tubes are getting hot getting warm because they trying to put out my circuits trying to put out but no output then um, a lot of times it's a dirty relay contact so we take the relay apart and we clean it now we got contact and there we go we got the watts again also you can have an open circuit or you know a, a bad circuit in the tank circuit um, you know a bad wire bad coax you know internal coax in the amp all that can happen they're common problems especially your tune and load um, capacitor um, those go bad they are um, but a lot of times if those short if those short your output shorts and a lot of times the amp will blow a fuse if those short and going last if you got a short you blowing um, fuses in the amp first thing is to check for I'm going to turn this thing off now and unplug it double safety it's got bleeders on it first thing is you got a short check your tubes if you're blowing um, if you're blowing fuses um, pull your tubes out and then put a new fuse in see if it's still blowing it see, see if you still got a short if your uh, short goes away you got a shorted tube right um, also you check your um, variable caps for arcing and black spots and pitted and all that um, see if you got any um, bad wires or anything but in order if you got a short tubes first it could be a shorted um, high voltage capacitor you know most of them have two even a lot more it could be a high voltage capacitor could be a diode another common problem is the diodes that's the power supply diodes in this one most modern ones are black with the uh, white band nowadays but this amp is old right but your power supply diodes and if that fails you know disconnect them or disconnect the AC coming into them 
and then fired it up again. If it's still shorted, it's your power supply transformer. A lot of times the transformer blows. You see how small this transformer is? Very small transformer, right? I'll stick this tube over here to give you a size, you know. Not a big transformer at all. That's a 50 watt transformer. So what happens is people dry these amps and they, you know, hit them with, you know, 20, 50 watts. And they get a couple hundred watts out of it for like five, ten minutes. And then the um, tube is going to blow or the transformer is going to blow. But um, when once you, you know, blow the transformer, cancel Christmas. But anyway, I hope that, you know, um, helps people, you know, try to fix amps or see, you know, where they are with it. Um, if the tubes are heating up, you know, you key down and they seem to be getting hot, you're probably getting dry. If your uh, input SWR is very high, then, uh, and the tubes don't seem to be, you know, uh, very hot or getting a lot of power, it's probably your input. Um, if the tubes are running hot but no output, it's probably somewhere on your output, your tank circuit, or your relay. Um, anyway, camera's running dead, and I'm going to get out of here for this one. Hope it helps. This is part one. Very simple stuff. Bye.